Hello everyone, this is Colossius, and in this video, I'm going to attempt to tell you how to get to 5Q by going over several things that I've seen in my students' games and other Q games, and talk to you about the simple mistakes that are repeating over and over between the 9Q and 5Q level, and how you can work them. So let's jump right into it. All right, so first up, I want to read you this post that I made in Discord. I found a few big keys for 9Q to 5Q. Here they are. Surround the weak groups. Stop trying to do other stuff. Surround the weak groups before big moves. Take the bases of groups and surround them. Groups that don't have bases should not be ignored. You should surround them. Don't try to kill, surround them. In case you missed it, surround them is really important. Some basic shapes that are commonly missed are nets, simple capture races, third line cutting points, and ladders. These are very, very common shapes, but they are very commonly missed. So if you give it to a 9Q to 5Q in a problem, you say, hey, solve this problem, they can solve it quite easily. But if it comes up in the middle of the middle game, when they're thinking about all these fights and tactics and blah, 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 then they miss it quite often. So this is something you should train yourself to see. Let's start with the problems. That'll be the simplest. Let's go ahead and look at my handy dandy website. Yes, yeah, self-promotion. Okay, so this is a site that I'm building. It's modeled after 101waychi.com, but this is something I'm building to have a similar feel, which is categorizing Go problems. That is something I think we really, really lack. Let's look at ladders. All right, so if I give this to you as a problem, you can probably solve it. But in a game, what you would normally see is maybe a Nobi or an Atari um, or a lot of this stuff, right? But here, you literally just can ladder it to the edge. And it looks super simple, like, right? It, as a Go problem, it's super simple. But how often do you just miss stuff like that? That is a very common thing that is missed because you're so caught up in all the other stuff that you miss a basic shape. Here's another one. Uh, Black is probably going to try to escape or looking at the capture race, um, but really it's just a simple ladder, like so, right? And this is something I think a lot of people lack is just doing these over and over and over. So if you mess up a ladder, just one ladder, Go do 50 ladder problems. They don't have to be hard. You can do them, if you can solve them in a couple seconds, that's fine. Just do like 50 of them or 100 of them. Drill yourself on these basic shapes every time you mess it up in order to train your eyes to notice it more. All you're doing is training your pattern recognition, right? You're not learning a new thing. You're not trying to learn deep reading. All you're doing is training your pattern recognition. Not something that's hard to do, but it's something that you are training yourself to master. It's a very simple idea, but you wanna do it perfectly. You wanna execute it perfectly. So you never wanna miss a ladder. You never wanna miss a net and all the other shapes. So it was uh, nets, simple capture races, third line cuts and ladders. So here well, you can see some capturing races and I think a lot of people would mess this up. Uh, so all you have to do is just take a liberty here by preventing the eye. Bada bing, bada boom. But I think a lot of people would maybe try to Atari and then get themselves into a co, right? Or maybe they would try to surround on the outside, but it would be I versus no I at that point. In this case, it's Seki. All right, and here, this is another one that maybe some people will struggle with, but it's just the capture race, right? So if you just train yourself to notice these patterns and be able to count the liberties and just know how many liberties there are and know exactly where to start taking the liberties at, then it becomes a lot simpler. So in order to get good at this, this is something I think is very easy to fix. All you have to do is just do Go problems every day, right? You don't have to do a lot. You can just spend five minutes as long as you are doing Go problems every single day. And you wanna drill these simple problems. You don't wanna worry about the deep reading, the awesome stuff. You wanna drill the simple basic shapes. So that way you can perfectly execute them in the middle game. You may doubt me, you may think, oh, I know this, blah, blah, blah. But I guarantee you, if you're in this range, you are missing some of the basic shapes. I don't know which ones, it might be different per person, but you're missing them. Either on your side or your opponent's side, but you're missing them. So you need to figure it out by looking at your own games, figure out what shapes you're missing and master them. All right, so go problems out of the way. Let's look at some game examples. So here is go we're gonna be talking about the other stuff that I think a lot of players are just missing from 9Q to 5Q. The leading mistake is attack and defense. For some reason, everyone wants to make points. You don't want points. <laughs> you do not want territory. Territory is bad. Don't make territory. You have been lied to. 
territory is a lie. What you want is a positive exchange rate, okay? So imagine you get $100, your opponent gets $100. Cool, you both have $100, but it's, it's even. What if your goal isn't to get $100, but your goal is to get more than hell? Then you've only made an even exchange rate. So what if you get $10 and he gets $0? Yes, it's less money, but the exchange rate is much more positive. You don't care about points as much as you care about exchange rates. The most valuable thing that you can do to make a positive exchange rate is to attack. Attacking is the most profitable thing that you can do in this game. Attacking your opponent, your opponent has to play defense, and usually it's zero points or maybe two points for the eyes or whatever, and you'll be making some points, maybe five, maybe 10, whatever, but you'll be making a positive exchange rate. All the big moves, all they're doing is setting up positions to attack with or to reduce with or whatever, but they're positions to support a fight. For example, let's just make the San Rense, right? The San Rense has zero points of territory. And for those who don't know what San Rense, it's a three star formation for black. So all three star points, there's zero points of territory. But if your opponent invades, you get to attack them and make a positive exchange rate. The amount of times I see players try to make territory with their star points. They're thinking, oh, I need to make territory with this. And they try to make a big corner, but the in-quarters invade. Oh, difficult life and death problems. Maybe things fall apart. Or maybe their star point gets attacked, quote unquote, and they end up defending the base or the eye space or something. And the star point never gets any influence. I'm almost convinced. I am, I am becoming convinced that star points are bad for below 5Q <laughs> because no one knows how to use the center. No one knows how to do attack and defense. And I think this is incredibly important if you're going to use any sort of fourth line moves or influence moves, because they're not meant for points. If you want points, the third line is a lot better. Three, four points get a lot more points than the four, four point, but the four, four point gets influence. Or in other words, a position that you can set up to attack something. All right, so in this example, we're gonna go over some of the common attack and defense mistakes. So the first one here is going to be this one. If you watch my stream, you hear this all the time, all the time. Do not run with knight's moves. If you're playing defense, don't run with a cuttable shape. You need defense. Knight's moves are for attacking, for surrounding, getting around something, but it has cutting points. So it's terrible for defense. Use your one point jumps. These are great. It's a really solid shape. It, it's really cool. We learned it's a double digit cube, but for some reason everyone's like, oh, the double digit cube moves, but I need to be better now. I need to do something more. Like, no, you got to single digit cube by doing this. Just do it better, right? Just keep doing it and stop trying to be all the Tsujis. Our reading is improving and we're noticing Aji more, but for some reason, players get distracted by the Aji and stop doing their fundamentals, which is just run away without getting cut. Another way that could look is you can play a diagonal to run while surrounding something. This is only good if black doesn't have a base. If we can run while surrounding a baseless group, then that's pretty effective. But if black's alive everywhere, we want to just get out, just go run, get out of there, but don't get cut. So if you're playing a Knight's move, this is a very dangerous shape to run with. There are several ways to attack it. First off, you can just try to cut up, cut it directly, right? You can just cut it directly and try to fight, or maybe you can try to cut this way. Sometimes the other one works. And this one's a little bit difficult to do at this level. Maybe it's like 4Q plus or something, but another way to bully this knight is to peep the cutting point. This forces the opponent to get a little bit heavy shape and you could start surrounding them. So now white is heavier, it's harder to sacrifice or play Sabaki and they're getting surrounded and they have no eyes. This is another way to attack the knight's move, but a little bit less common at this level. I just want you to understand that knight's moves have a lot of weaknesses, so it's not good for defense. It's great for offense because you're surrounding a weak stone and your opponent doesn't have time to cut you. There's a big difference though. This is another mistake that I see all the time. And this is exactly what I was mentioning earlier in the video. Stop trying to make territory, just surround the weak group. It will work out like 90% of the time it will work out. But if you don't know how to surround, you can't really do anything in the attack defense. You're not gonna be able to attack your opponent like hardly at all. There are exceptions, but we don't need exceptions if we can't even surround a weak group. I'm pretty sure any Dawn player would say that this is just bad because 
you're trying to make points. It's only 10 points. It's so small. You don't want 10 points. You want to surround the weak group. A common shape to surround is the capping move. Caps are really good to get around your opponent. Knight's moves are as well. So this would be a perfect move. And all we have to do is just walk white back to his group. Don't try to kill it. Let it live. Don't try to kill. Let them worry about that. Let them worry about the life and death. All you're thinking about is surround the weak group. You got influence. Why got nothing? Positive exchange rate. This influence is going to be worth something. It'll get you value somewhere else. And arguably, this is worth more than 10 points. And white still got nothing. This is a common thing. Another common mistake from this, another one, is you'll do this and your opponents will be like, oh, they're getting too much influence. I got to stop it. Don't tanuki your weak groups. I cannot stress enough. How often I'm just telling players, stop tanuking your weak groups. Rule number one of the Klossy approach, don't die. If you can't get to the end of the game without dying, stop trying to win. Get to the end of the game without dying, okay? And I don't mean like one or two stones, I mean like a group, a section. If you can play the game and get to the end of the game and it's within 30 points, who cares if you lose, right? That is step one. Get to the end of the game without dying. After that, what you're going to start looking for is attacking opportunities. That's when you gain your lead. But you have to attack from strength. Ignoring your weak group like this, you will pay tax if your opponent just tries to surround you. But another common mistake is the opponent tanuki Oh, they're getting something. I need to tanuki as well. So you go get something. Well, now you haven't punished. Now the white has gotten away with it because now white still isn't getting attacked. Screw territory, screw the rest of the game, just make your base, defend yourself, and surround their weak groups. That's all you gotta do. Get to the end of the game doing those two things, okay? That's all you need. The rest of the stuff will come with practice and examples, but if you can't do those two things, everything else doesn't really matter. All right, here. This is a position where maybe you think black is winning because black has a ton of territory. It's pretty close. I actually don't know who's winning, but arguably I would say white. But the idea is white has influence, okay? Black has a weak group. Now, the common shape to attack, according to the Klossy approach, is the capping move. It's a very common move. Now, white just focuses on attacking, okay? Just surround. Oh, black to negate. Well, defense first. Don't get cut. Don't get cut. All right, but now, white continues. Surround. Black play. And now, which is going to play a big move because black's alive now. There are knight's moves here, there is some cutting potential, but it's difficult to find the perfect one. And arguably, I thought this might be a mistake. I think it might just need to be here. Okay, just make sure that we're cut and just keep surrounding, just keep surrounding, let them out, just keep surrounding. I think that might actually be better, but the idea is white focuses on surrounding. And you see how much value these three stones got. And then also look at these three stones. How much value did they get? Hardly any, right? Meanwhile, white is radiating over the empty section of the center. Okay, so white got a positive exchange rate, but I think a lot of people want the territory. Want the territory. Want the territory. Okay, but look at this center. Starting to get a little bit big. What if I go, uh, what's a good one here? And then it's cap, or maybe I can like play something, uh, I don't know, just cap is okay. And then one more move, like I'm controlling the entire board. <laughs> yeah, he got fourth line territory, but if it costs you the rest of the board, it's not worth it. So these are the things you gotta realize is if you're trying to make points in Gote, it's bad. You want points in Sinta. You want to make territory and still get to the big move when you attack. Just surround the group and it'll happen naturally. Nine out of 10 times. All right, so in this one, black invades. All right, so white focuses on surrounding. Black cross cuts, makes it difficult. White focuses on defense. Okay, defense first. Defense. Okay, white keeps black cut. So this stone is getting in a lot of trouble. And notice how the more the more this fight goes on, the more cash, actual territory, that white is getting. Meanwhile, black's causing all this trouble and getting nothing. So black starts running. Okay, white plays defense one more time. And now I believe, uh, soon, <laughs> soon. Okay, well, I didn't do it. Um, but you could just attack right here. You could just cap. It's fine. Um, arguably, this is another way to do it, but this is not what the video is about. This is a kind of an abstract attack, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just cap. Okay, just cap. It'll work out. Then <clears throat> they invade again. Surround the weak group. A lot of players. I want the territory. No. Surround the weak group. Surround the weak group. 
Who cares about the money? Just surround the weak group and then cap. So we get the cap now. Now all we're doing is just surrounding. Okay, how many points is black getting? What, three, four? White has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish. We didn't get as much cash as if we could have, but we made a positive exchange rate. We got more than black and we're still controlling the board. Okay, and just cap and surround and surround and surround. Okay, defense first. Okay, don't get distracted trying to kill your opponent. Don't die. Number one roll. If you get in, if you get in the fight and you get weak, let him live. Bye. I'm defending myself. I'm going home. So attack. Just surround, surround, surround. Defense first. Surround, surround. Defense first. Stay surround, 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 surround. Defense first. Okay. That. That is how you attack. That is how you fight. All right. So now White actually starts poking the eyes. But you can see, just keep them surrounded. Keep them surrounded. White doesn't even care if Black lives. White doesn't care, just keep black surrounded, keep black surrounded. And a lot of the times it will die naturally. I see so many groups that are just dead. And then the student tries to kill them. As soon as the student tries to kill them, that's when it lives. Because you went for the eyes too soon, you left cutting points in your shape, you left openings for your opponent to take advantage of, because killing leaves a lot of problems, okay? Killing loses points, leaves cutting points, loses a lot. And a lot of times, trying to kill the group actually makes it live and destroys your entire position. If you just surround it, let it live. Your opponent doesn't know life and death and they die. That's on them. That's their fault. Don't try to kill it. Let them kill themselves. It's their problem to solve. Don't worry about it. So let's talk about another concept that I see very, very often. Okay, we're talking about attack and defense. And I noticed the pattern. Okay, I noticed something by doing lots of game reviews. Players only attack invasions. And then I realized the fights that they're missing are stones like these. They're not taking the base, okay? Uh, let's just put one, just get in their face, get in their face. One space away, get in their face. Third line, one space away. Just do it, right? Just attack. There are exceptions, but just attack. Take their base and fight. You'll lose your base. Now focus on defense, okay? Just focus on defense. Oh, they're gonna get greedy. Focus on defense. Oh, they're gonna get greedy. Focus on defense. Oh, they're gonna get greedy. Well, now you're alive. Okay, now you can just reduce um, somewhere. That is a lot bigger and a lot more difficult for Black to handle. It does not matter. The idea is one weak group is okay. Just play defense. Once you take away their base, if you invade next to their base, it's a lot easier to survive because they have to play defense at some point. You're gonna get a move to save yourself. But I notice a lot of players, they won't attack groups without a base, like at all, they just won't. They'll just keep playing big moves, blah, blah, blah. And then when the opponent invades or they invade, that's when the fight starts. Now, this is a good point to fight. This is true, but that's only half of them. You're missing the other half of the attacks. All right, we have another invasion, okay? You try to make territory. Then they Tanuki! <laughs> they block. They're still playing Tanuki's. And now we're gonna Tanuki again. <laughs> just, okay, first off, you can just surround. Cap is fine, but I think for this one, it's a diagonal just to deal with the slide, but whatever, right? Just surround the stone, please. I'm begging you, surround the stone. Stop trying to get points when you're alive. Okay, then your opponent Tanuki's stop Tanuki'ing. And if your opponent Tanuki's, punish, surround them, surround, look how freaking big this is. It's huge. Okay, your opponent has to deal with this or you just win the game. Your opponent does this. And I think later uh, white blocks right here to get the points. Who cares? This is nothing. No, we don't care about money. We don't care about cash, okay? We just want to surround things. Okay, and now black pays like their tax with interest and it's very expensive. <laughs> this is a very expensive Tanuki. Okay, black out what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight points for this? <laughs> That's insane. This is so much interest. This is this is so expensive. Okay, now black has to defend in this position. It's so hard. And then white Tanukis. <laughs> All right, that is it for my rant for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys at 5Q.